Hey guys, it's Bob Morreale here with The Tuning School. Have you ever wonder why spark events vary from car to car, or why you can't seem to get that perfect timing? Well, on today's Tech Tuesday, we're gonna tell you the five things that can mess up the spark events in your vehicle. Hey guys, welcome back. So the first thing we're gonna do is define what exactly is spark advance. So spark advance is how far in advance of top dead center are you going to light that fire? So how far in advance of the piston reaching top dead center? So we talk about this in classes quite a bit. Why can't you just wait until the piston is at perfectly top dead center, then light the fire and then push the piston down? It doesn't work that way. So why doesn't it work that way? Well, things take time. It takes time to start the flame front to propagate. It takes time for that fuel to burn and then to go ahead and push down on that piston. And so when you're actually tuning a vehicle, the proper spark advance number isn't actually set in stone. It's actually based on a number of factors. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the first thing that will mess up your spark advance. Number one, hot intake air temperatures or air charge temperatures. So what does this mean? This means that as the air comes into the air filter, it somehow is gathering up a lot of heat from the engine bay, which is very common with a factory setup. And so a very common easy fix is to buy a reputable cold air intake. Do not buy a Chinese cold air intake with no reputation whatsoever. We've actually tested these here at the tuning school and found that you lose power that way. And so the whole idea behind this is so that as the air comes into the vehicle, you get the coldest possible air that you can. So it doesn't come up from a header or whatever other heat source you have and go ahead and contaminate that air charge. Now what this causes is a reduction in the amount of spark advance that you can run. And it will contribute to having knock or detonation or whatever issues related because that air is that much hotter. And so the goal is to get the coldest possible air charge that you can, making that our number one cause of spark advance being ruined. So number two, fuel quality. Ouch. Okay, so if you live somewhere probably in the Midwest or California and you've only got access to 91, you understand this problem without me saying much. However, most areas of the country also have access to 92 or 93 octane. But let's take this a little bit further. Let's just say it's not just fuel quality. Let's just say it's also burn rate. Burn rate is related to the octane of the fuel. So something like 91, 93 is generally not a problem and people can tune for it very easily. However, you can also find that very high octane race fuels burn very slowly, which will actually require more spark advance. So when you tune that vehicle, you will actually have to add quite a bit more spark advance. However, your problems can go either way. If you actually have a poor quality fuel, it will absolutely ruin the amount of spark advance that you can run. So if your vehicle makes the best power it can at 23 degrees on 93, and you throw some 87 in there, don't be surprised if all you can run is 18, maybe even 17 degrees, because you're gonna see a lot of knock from poor fuel quality. All right, on to number three, spark plug heat range. We see this all the time. So this is often when people will put a supercharger or a turbo or even running nitrous on their vehicles. And then the last thing they do or they forget to do is to change those plugs out for something that's at least one heat range colder. Now this is something you're gonna have to experiment a little bit with just to see what that engine really likes. But the problem is the spark plug tends to stick into the combustion chamber a little bit too far, which causes knock, which causes you to reduce the amount of spark advance that you can run. So it is an extremely easy way to ruin the potential spark advance that it can run. And so an easy fix is going to be to go one heat range colder and then retune that vehicle. So whereas before, maybe you can only run 13 degrees with that supercharger, maybe now you can run 15 and you've gained a good 20 or 30 horsepower. Very common problem, very easy fix. And on to number four, a personal favorite of mine, the actual combustion environment. And so combustion chambers are like, they're, they're a hot spot for me personally, because if you have the cylinder heads off and you didn't take the time to have somebody that's a professional smooth out the chambers or at least get rid of the sharp edges, you kind of screwed up. Now here's why. Heat tends to build up on hot edges in the combustion chamber. And it literally takes 20 minutes per chamber to go through there with a sandpaper roller and just break those edges over to prevent a lot of the knock, which will screw up the amount of spark advance that you can run. 
Now keep one thing in mind, I'm not saying you need to run all the Spark Advance in the world. What I'm really saying is, is it's preventing you from running the ideal Spark Advance that that engine really would like to have because of a couple stupid things along the way. So how can you fix this? Do a little sandpaper rolling and of course when you have those uh, cylinder heads off the vehicle, have the combustion chamber ceramic coated. If you will coat the chambers and the valve faces, you create an even surface for that heat to distribute across, which we've actually seen work in testing. And even one step further, if you've got the engine out and you're gonna forge it, have the piston tops coated with that same ceramic coating. Now you've created an ideal combustion environment that actually does retain the heat, but it doesn't have individual hot spots where it can build up, creating knock, and then ruining the amount of spark advance you could run. It is worth the money, for sure. All right. Number five, vehicle load. Talking to all you Jeep guys and all you truck guys with 36s and 38s and whatever giant tires and wheels that weigh 50 pounds more than the factory ones did. Guys, take a breath. Okay, here's the problem. It's called mechanical advantage or lack thereof. You're creating a problem where that engine has to work harder to get that vehicle moving, which actually creates what? It creates a problem for that engine where it cannot run the ideal spark advance that it could run. And you can actually test this on your own if you do your own tuning. You can see the differences when you cause increased loads on an engine. It simply cannot tolerate as much spark advance as it could before when it had a mechanical advantage. Uh, a good example, again, is going to be Jeep guys put these big tires and wheels on, which I get, that's what Jeeps are for. But what's the very next thing to do? Gears. Why is that? Mechanical advantage. They have to have that to get that acceleration back that they've lost. So that's how you would fix something like that. Big trucks, same exact problem. They end up putting gears in it. However, before they put those gears in, that engine is going to struggle, and you can tell because it takes a lot longer to sweep through the same RPM range than it did before, creates heat, creates knock, reduces the amount of spark advance that you can actually run and causing you less power overall. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it helps you figure out what's ruining your spark advance. If you're looking for more information about tuning, check out thetuningschool.com, hit follow, subscribe, whatever you've got to do to get those notifications for more high performance tuning knowledge. And as always, stay tuned.